in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, we're starting to get reports of electric vehicles bursting into flames. But this isn't just an EV problem. Anything with a lithium-ion battery can be a ticking time bomb just waiting to go off. As residents start returning to their homes, I've got some important tips to help keep you safe and your family safe. If you weren't aware, over 20 electric vehicles caught fire in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. That was back in 2022. First responders are already handling rescue efforts and everything else that happens after a hurricane. And now they're dealing with this new kind of fire hazard, one that's resource intensive. It's one that we haven't faced in the past. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. And I want to be clear, this isn't just an electric vehicle problem. Anything with lithium-ion batteries, that's where the hazard is. And those batteries can be found in golf carts, e-bikes, e-scooters, even power tools, laptops. And while they're generally safe, once they're submerged in water, especially salt water, a chemical reaction can lead to internal short circuits, and that can lead to thermal runaway. That's a chemical reaction that doesn't need oxygen from the outside atmosphere to burn. These batteries can even burn underwater. And even if they're not burning, they can release a significant amount of toxic gas that's flammable and can even lead to explosions. This isn't the first time we've seen this risk. I already mentioned Hurricane Ian, but after Hurricane Sandy back in 2012, there were reports of electric vehicles catching on fire because they were submerged. But now we've got so many more lithium ion batteries out there. They're in almost everything and the risk is becoming significant. I mentioned earlier, we're already starting to get reports of electric vehicles failing due to the storm surge from Hurricane Helene. This resident, for example, they lost their house. It's suspected an EV caught on fire in the garage and burned everything down. In this clip, you can see another electric vehicle that was flooded out. It's parked in a garage. And you'll see just how fast this EV will fail once it starts going into thermal runaway. It starts with just a little smoke, but then bam, the batteries go into thermal runaway and you've got flame almost instantaneously. Now the smoke itself was a little subtle. So if you missed it, go back to the beginning of this clip and watch it again. Listen to the roar, the popping of the cells. As the battery cells inside of the electric vehicle's battery enclosure start going to thermal runaway. Now, if you live down in that area and your home was affected by the storm surge, you left an electric vehicle behind and that was submerged during the flooding, do not charge it. If it is plugged into a charger, unplug it immediately. Get it out of your garage immediately. Place it at least 50 feet from any exposures. That means your house or anything else that's flammable, other vehicles, for example. If you can't get home and you know you've got a vehicle in your garage that's been affected by that storm surge, reach out to the local authorities. They may be able to go to your house and remove that vehicle for you. They would much rather have a vehicle burning in the driveway or in the front yard versus burning in your garage, burning your whole house down. And this doesn't just apply to EVs, golf carts, e-scooters, e-bikes, tool batteries, laptop batteries, anything with a lithium ion battery. If it was flooded out in the storm surge, it needs to be placed away from your house. Of course, smaller batteries don't need to be 50 feet away from your house, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Just get them away from anything flammable. Flooding in the Carolinas right now, we've seen a lot of that, and it's not related to salt water, but there's still a hazard if you have a lithium ion powered device or electric vehicle that was submerged. For those of you that live further north in places like the Carolinas where there's fresh water flooding, it can still damage or cause your devices that have batteries in them to go into thermal runaway. So no matter where you are, if you have an electric vehicle or a lithium ion powered device like an e-bike, e-scooter, golf cart, take those same precautions. If you're in the process of cleaning up your home or business and you see smoke coming from one of these devices, evacuate the area immediately and call the fire department. Do not attempt to move or handle that device yourself. You could be burned. You could inhale the toxic gases and injure yourself in the process. At the end of all this, there's going to be a lot of lithium ion batteries that need to be thrown out. They're not going to be useful anymore, but throwing them in the trash isn't the right way to go. They need to be disposed of properly due to that fire risk. Check with your local hazardous waste disposal program or battery recycling center and make sure they get recycled properly. Again, mishandling lithium ion batteries can continue to be a fire hazard even after this storm is over.
I know it's been devastating down there, and I pray for everybody that's involved. Take these precautions seriously to protect your home and your family. Stay safe, and let's keep these post-storms fire from causing further devastation.